So today I thought I would just do a completely normal review for the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. Um, not really the zombies. I'll get into it a little bit. Uh, definitely not to the campaign. I mean, come on. You, you've seen what everybody has to say about that. I'm not reviewing that. I'm not even going to give a single thought about that. And honestly, I haven't even downloaded it. And I'm not going to. I'm going to skip it. But getting right into it. Um, I've been playing a good little bit of the Modern Warfare 3 um, multiplayer and a tiny bit of the zombies over the past couple days. And um, I'm a completely normal consumer. You know, I'm not a fucking super sweat. I don't really play the games that much to begin with. Um, but if they're fun, I do like to play them. And that's about it. We'll leave it at that. And you watching this, you're probably in the same boat. And that's why you're watching. I would hope so. Unless you're some kind of super sweat that's just scheming and trying to learn how uh, casuals think just to get that little bit of extra sweat in. But I hope not. So. But anyway. Um, it's not that bad. I think I'll just start off with saying that it's not that bad. If I had to sum it up really quick, just in case, you know, you want to click off already. I think it's like Modern Warfare 2 if infinity ward actually cared about criticism and wanted their game to be playable now notice i'm saying playable i'm not saying you know fun i'm not saying uh anything like that right just just playable the bare minimum but unfortunately infinity ward hates doing even the bare minimum who knows why genuinely no person knows why now, going back to what I'm talking about, um, Modern Warfare 3, this one's made by Sledgehammer, um, and honestly, I know Sledgehammer gets a lot of hate, but I'm just gonna be honest, I really like Sledgehammer, I think they do great, I think their games are great, but the thing is, is Sledgehammer kind of got bullied by Activision and Infinity Ward, and there's not really a reason to it other than corporate greed. Um, for some reason, Activision, after Modern Warfare 2019, really, really, really trusts and loves Infinity Ward. I mean, from their perspective, it's understandable, right? Just straight up, they're a greedy company. They just want the money. And uh, if you look at it from that perspective, it makes complete sense, just straight up. They gave them Modern Warfare 2019. Just look at how that did. They gave them Warzone, um, they gave them Modern Warfare 2, that, even though everybody honestly hates it, uh, if you want to admit it or not, did really, really good, like, scary good. And, um, I feel like that's a problem in itself, but that's something for another time. So, the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer is just a complete mesh of the new Call of Duty with the old Call of Duties, and I think it doesn't really know what it wants to be. And I feel like that kind of is bad for it, which, you know, is obvious, but it could have been good, which is what sucks. Um, now, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just it could have been so much better than it is. Like, the potential is... It was just out of this fucking world. So what they did was they took the new engines for the games, um, the Modern Warfare 2019 engine, um, the same exact graphics, I, I mean, some people might disagree with this, but I'm just gonna say it, the same exact graphics as Modern Warfare 2, and just put the original Modern Warfare 2 maps on it, not, not the 2022 Modern Warfare 2, the original Modern Warfare 2, all of those OG maps into this game on the new engine, with the new movement, and um while that's what everybody wanted and i wanted it too and i'm glad it's here at the same time it's just really unfortunate because the new wave of players just play in the most annoying way i mean it's so bad everybody knows we all agree and so the new players now have access to the original modern warfare 2 maps and honestly for let's just say 75 percent of those people it's their first time ever playing these maps and that's really scary 
that's really scary i mean just getting old wise in itself and on top of that in the way that they just don't understand how they were played and so they're gonna try to adapt to these maps and play these maps the way they've known how to play maps um for instance modern warfare 2019 is when most of them started playing right covid and everything infinity ward made that game as we know the maps in that game infinity ward said themselves were made to help everybody's quote play style right so they were pretty much giving in to campers like really bad like if you go and play modern warfare 2019 which i mean i know you already have you're watching this video you know those maps cater to campers so bad it is so unplayable at least to me you know if you're a camper then i mean <laughs> you're probably having fun but i cannot stand it and so what that means is the older players right that learned how to play call of duty in those ways and kind of got their hands held by playing so passive um on maps that promote that play style they're now trying to apply that way of playing to these maps and while the maps can be played like that it's just they're being played like that way more than they're supposed to and it's making games way more slower than they should be it's making games way more unenjoyable for everyone across the board i'm pretty sure even the people that do play like that aren't even enjoying it that much and it's just really unfortunate to see because I feel like if everybody played just normally, like, and I don't mean normal, but like, you know, be on crack, drink 10 cans of G Fuel, then just push everything without thinking. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying don't sit in the same corner that's cheesy for a whole match, every single match you play, because that's what they're doing. And you know half of them are using that Groot skin on purpose on top of it, just because they know that it's harder to see. They're trying every single thing they can just to be more annoying and ratty, and it's so unbearable. Now, obviously, that's not really the game's fault, but it's still the game itself, and it's how the game is played, and it's how you're gonna experience it. And so it still is a downside to it, unfortunately. And I just feel bad about it because the game is good. Like, it's not a bad game. It has its problems, and I'll get into those in a second. But it's just like, the players, man, they just hold it back so much. And it's so unfortunate. No matter how much they could update it or try to fight it, I mean, it, it's too late. It's just, it's how they play. It's how they learned how to play from these new Call of Duties. And it's just how they're always going to play now. And I, I feel like that's just really unfortunate. Now, the guns... The guns are pretty good. I think the guns themselves, model-wise, and you know, attachments and all that, are absolutely amazing. I think they have a great wide selection of guns. I think the attachments are all great. I know there's a lot of people. Um, I saw Wildcat on Twitter complaining about the pure amount of attachments and all that. I feel like it's a good thing. I feel like the more options you have for something that's so little, you know, and minuscule as that, I mean, I'm not saying it's minuscule in a way that it doesn't affect the game or anything. I'm just saying it's a minuscule thing as in like, it doesn't really matter which ones you pick too much, right? It's, it, it all just comes down to preference. I mean, yeah, there's the pros and cons to them and each ones can change how it works for your playstyle, And that's not really minuscule in itself, but I'm saying it's minuscule in the way of, in the grand scheme of the game. Does it really matter how many attachments there are? Like, does it really matter that they're giving you more options of how you want to experience the game? No, no, it doesn't. It's a good thing. And I just don't see how you could think it's a bad thing. I just don't. And I feel like that's a good part of the game. I feel like they did good on that. And the amount of guns is also a good thing. And it doesn't really affect the camo grind either, because the camo grind doesn't apply to the Modern Warfare 2 guns. So it's even at the point where it's like, you can't even complain about it if you're just grinding the camos. And so with that, I feel like all of the guns, all of the attachments are all good. 
and I feel like if you complain about them, you really just want to complain about something. And if you do, complain about the skill-based matchmaking, please. <laughs> complain about the players playing the way they do. Um, just don't complain about something that doesn't need to be complained about. You're wasting your voice, right? Now getting into the time to kill, I feel like the time to kill in the beta was absolutely awful. It was so unsatisfying and just felt off. But now that the full game has come out, I feel like the time to kill has been adjusted a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if it has or not, or if the guns have just been adjusted themselves. Excuse me, I have to burp. <clears throat> but I feel like now that the game's fully out, the time to kill is pretty good. I feel like it could be faster in some instances, but it's pretty good as it is. Let's be honest. Now I do know they added a new armory system. And with the new armory system, you have to complete three daily challenges just to unlock something. And it's not even just a certain class of things in the game, like, oh, you only have to do them to unlock some calling cards or some, I don't know, lethal equipment. No, it, it's, it's everything. Like, nothing is <laughs> safe from this. And that is really make or break for some people. I feel like some people love it and some people hate it. I feel like it's fine, it's just I prefer the old way. I'm not gonna sit here and complain about it, but I mean, it's not better, I'll say that. You have to first select what you want to get, and then you have to complete three daily challenges for it. And now I know you can be thinking, well, if you get one thing and then complete your daily challenges, how are you gonna unlock other things? Because you've already done them. Well, whenever you unlock the three daily challenges for the day, you get a bonus challenge. And what that is, is if you win a game, it counts as a daily challenge. So once you do your first three daily challenges and get something, you then have to pick something else you want and then win three times. And then you get that. And then you can just keep doing that as long as you want. Now, I know lately at the beginning of the launch, there's been some issues where wins aren't counting for some reason. Um, I'm pretty sure they fixed that by now. If not, they really need to get to it. <laughs> I haven't checked. I've just been playing the game. I don't really go to unlock too much stuff, so, you know, I'm really casual. But I feel like this system is not that bad. I'll say that. Now, on to the DLC conversation. Most people feel like it's just a DLC. And to that, I have to say, it is. Just straight up, it is. There's no way around it. Nobody's disagreeing. It is a DLC. It was meant to be a DLC. We've known that. We knew that probably, I don't know, a year ago? Like right when Modern Warfare 2 came out? <laughs> We've known this for a good while and people are just like being shocked by it. Like yeah, what 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 did you expect? We were told Modern Warfare 3 was gonna be a DLC. D we were told Modern Warfare 3 was gonna be a, a fuck. We were told Modern Warfare 3 was gonna be a DLC and then it comes out, and it's like a DLC. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> so I understand they're marketing it as a full game and it's new and not a DLC. They're not even saying a word about DLC. They're really avoiding it. But I mean, it's a DLC. I'm pretty sure I saw Sledgehammer say that they were told Modern Warfare 3 was just gonna be a DLC and then some other employees were told that it was gonna be a full game, and then they never really came to an agreement or an understanding of which one it would be, and so they kinda just made it, and uh, then they just put it out as a full game Activision did. And another thing I wanna talk about is, Sledgehammer wanted to make a lot of decisions for this game. Of course, it's their game, that's what they do. But Activision and Infinity Ward told them no to some decisions. And that's really weird because um, it's Sledgehammer's game, you know? And for an example, Sledgehammer wanted to bring back the pick 10 system from old Call of Duties like BO2 and BO3 and, you know, those games. And then uh, Infinity Ward just straight up said no. And so it's not in the game. We could have had that with the OG Modern Warfare 2 maps 
and it could have been nostalgic, and maybe even the new players could have preferred it. But Infinity Ward said no, and that's it. And I just feel like that's really stupid. Like, what what is the point in having the studio make their own game and tell them they can make their own game with their own decisions and then just tell them no to their own system for how the guns work? That makes no sense. But, of course, corporate greed. Activision is going to do whatever they want. And, of course, Activision with Infinity Ward in their lap like a dog is just gonna be like yeah you know you can tell them whatever <laughs> like okay whatever and i'm not gonna talk about the zombies for too long but i will say this i played maybe one match of the zombies and the zombies was pretty fun it's not round based and you shouldn't expect it to be and i feel like playing it with that mindset of oh it's just a bonus you know dmz but with zombies i feel like if you play it like that it's enjoyable but if you go into it expecting a normal zombies experience, you're going to be disappointed. And I feel like that's about all I have to say right now for Modern Warfare 3. Um, if you want to buy it, I'd say go ahead. You know, it's, it's fun. It's better than Modern Warfare 2 for sure. But if you're thinking about it or you're on the fence, you know, and you're just you're just trying to find a reason to buy it, just don't, you know. If you're not sure about it and you're just iffy, just don't. Just don't. There's no point. If you already have Modern Warfare 2, just keep playing that. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, if you enjoy, let me know. If you disagree, let me know why. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.